Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hello. September 9, 2020. Wednesday morning. Hi. Hi. Wednesday morning. Okay, well... Today, the gospel comes from St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 20 to 25. Sorry, to 26, 20 to 26. Okay, this is a, um, a, difficult, a difficult gospel to, to uh, comprehend. But it's also very real. In our everyday lives. Okay? This is a kind of a mixture of uh, the the Beatitudes um, and, and other things mixed into the way St. Luke narrated this gospel. And we're going to read parts of it. Blessed are you who are poor. For the kingdom of heaven is yours, our Lord tells his disciples. Blessed are you who are hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are those among you who weep, for you will laugh. So our Lord presents a paradox. Right? You're blessed when you are apparently bad. Or not experiencing good things. Right? You're blessed when you are like that. Because there will come a time when the opposite of that suffering will be true for you. Earlier this morning we were just talking about the consequences of this lockdown. And this, this uh, uh, pandemic lockdown we are experiencing. And we were practically talking about this. Right? We are practically talking about how we can transform this unfortunate situation of being locked down into something positive for all of us, right? It's kind of like what this gospel is telling us today, right? It's, it's okay that you are suffering a few things now because later on, it's going to be different. The question is, how and why will it be different later on? So let's continue. Blessed are you when people hate you. How can that be a blessed situation <laughs> when people hate you? But our Lord says so. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude and insult you. When they unfriend you on Facebook or other places. Right? When they, when they, when they, uh, uh, you know, initially uh, uh, try to be goody goody with you, good friends with you, and then after a while they they realize, oops, we have something that's not quite in agreement with each other, and then they dump you, and they start even insulting you, and they start attacking you. And denounce your name as evil. See? Our Lord says here. They even denounce your name as evil. You are bad. <laughs> and you are evil on account. Okay, and here is where is the beautiful part of this. And this is where it explains everything. Why you are blessed while you are in a bad, so-called apparently bad situation. When you are insulted, excluded, etc., denounced on account of the Son of Man. What does that mean? On account of the Son of Man. In other words, if you are experiencing these bad situations with other people who don't seem to understand you, because... You are living your life in the manner that you are being uh, led to by God. Okay? 
on account of the Son of Man. Okay? Because you are my disciples, in other words, because you are doing what I am asking you to do, because you are trying to become saints in the middle of the world, because you are trying to live your life according to the will of God, blessed are you for experiencing those bad things on my account. Rejoice, our Lord continues, rejoice and leap for joy on those days or on that day. Why? Because behold, your reward will be great in heaven. Your reward will be great in heaven. You are all witnesses. And let's just put this better into our perspective, the perspective of our lives so that we understand the context of this very well. You, my children, are all witnesses to how this gospel today has happened to us in many more ways than we would like to count. Right? Right? Do you realize what I'm talking about here? We have had friends. We have had friends who had turned their backs on us on account of how we have defended things like the Holy Eucharist and the way that our Lord has been treated and handled in our parishes that we have been involved in. We have been ridiculed by the so-called good people because of the way that we have been practicing our own Catholic life. We have been insulted by a lot of good people. We have been called names. We have even been accosted physically, right? <laughs> Just because we want to pray. Just because we want to accompany our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. Just because we are living up to our Catholic faith in the most faithful way we know how. And in the most faithful way, the church has taught us how. Right? We've experienced this many times. So this gospel talks about us. This gospel talks about our experiences now. See, our Lord has, has projected that if you are my disciples, well... You're going to suffer. You're going to suffer on my account. No disciple is greater than his master. If they have done these things to the master, to Jesus Christ, well, the disciples should not expect anything less. If we are real disciples of Jesus Christ, we're going to experience the same sort of persecutions that our Lord himself suffered. And we, you, my children, are witnesses to this in a very, very big way because of the way that we have been practicing our faith, the way that we have been expressing our love and our devotion, particularly to the Holy, towards the Holy Eucharist. Okay? We have suffered plenty of what our Lord is talking about in this gospel. But... I'd also like to think that while we were going through all of that, you never saw me particularly sad and gloomy about it. Right? You never saw me sulk and be and feel so sorry for myself because oh I'm losing my friends. Oh I'm losing the trust of people who I thought uh, we're, we're, we're supposed to be the ones who will understand me better. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, being ostracized by people. Oh, my family is suffering because of what I'm trying to do. No. 
You never saw me be gloomy and sad about these things. You never, we, we never were sad about these things. We took it, we took all of these things in stride and with our chin up, not because we're snooty, not because we thought we're holier than thou, or not because we think we know better than everybody else. No. We did not feel sad and gloomy and sulk because of this gospel. Because our Lord says here, don't worry. Your reward will be great in heaven. Okay? So remember the perspective that our Lord is trying to tell us here. You will experience all these difficulties in your life here on earth. But don't worry. Don't worry. Your reward is going to be great in heaven if, if you be faithful to me on my account. If you are faithful to the things that I'm telling you to do. If you are faithful in the way you live your life according to the way I have asked you to live your life, which is to take up your cross and follow me. If that is the way you have been living your life and you have been a true disciple of Jesus Christ, then all of this opposition that we encounter through this journey of life is nothing, nothing, nothing compared to the promise of heavenly glory, heavenly bliss, heavenly happiness with God forever in heaven. See, and that is the kind of perspective that we should have in life. That's the kind of perspective we should have in life. That's the kind of hope that we have to look forward to. Because Jesus promised it. It's right here in this gospel. Jesus promised us this. If we are faithful. If we're faithful. So the important part here is the fidelity that we are expected to express see are we more faithful and are we more concerned about our own reputation and how other people are going to think about me if i do what god wants me to do or am i more concerned about my reputation my and my standing before the heavenly court of jesus christ to whom i am going to render an account at the end of my life. And many times. Not even at the end of your life. Because even, even on this earth. We will already be rendering an accounting. Of our misdeeds. And our sins. See? God has a way of extracting from us. Uh, some form of reparation. On this earth. Trouble is we don't always recognize it. We, all, we, we only look at the, those op opportunities for reparation as ah, tragedy, as challenge, difficulty, uh, sad situations without, without realizing. No, 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 no. Those things are actually opportunities that God is putting on your way to give you a chance to start repairing for your sins, to start being sorry for your sins here on earth so that when you face the eternal judge at the end of your life, well, you've already done time, so to speak. <laughs> right? You've already done time. You've already repaired uh, uh, and, and uh, done some kind of reparation for your sins on earth so that hopefully when you get to the eternal gate of judgment, uh, your punishment should be a little less. But that should not even be our main consideration. Our main consideration should really be fidelity. How faithful are we to Jesus Christ? How faithful are we to keeping up to the demands of our vocational calling as children of God by virtue of our baptism? That is really the big question we need to answer. Are we really living up to the baptismal calling? Eh? of being children of God 
heirs to his kingdom of heaven. And therefore, are we acting? Are we acting? Are we living our lives according to that dignity of being children of God? Or would we rather live our lives like friends with the enemy of God, the devil? And so we have a choice. We really have a choice. Are we living our lives according to our dignity as children of God by virtue of our baptism? Which includes, by the way, which includes all of these unfortunate sufferings that we might suffer on account of being a part of the royal, royal family of God. Okay? Or do we choose to live on the side of the enemy of God, the devil? So, let's, let's, let's take this gospel very much to heart because this is very, very relevant to us. Even to this day, even to this persecution that is going on in this lockdown, in this pandemic lockdown, this is very much at play. Eh? Could you imagine? Uh, <laughs> and this, I, I really am very convinced that the, this lockdown we are experiencing is actually part of the persecution of the church. This is the modern day persecution of Christians, of Catholics particularly. When our governors in the different states in the United States are actually imposing lockdowns on us to curtail our freedom of religion, to curtail our freedom of worship. Okay? We are suffering. We are in the midst of unfortunate events in this lockdown, all intended and geared towards putting a muzzle on our mouths, not only, not only physically with masks, but also and deeper, in a more deeper sense, muzzling our religious expression. Okay? Putting handcuffs on our desire to express our fidelity to our faith by going and worshiping God at, in church. See? This is religious persecution. Make no mistake about it. This is religious persecution. And we are going through suffering. And we need to fight. We need to fight these things. Okay? And look at this. We are not fighting here. See, why, 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 why am I fighting this lockdown? Why are we? Why are we supposed to fight this lockdown? Why are we supposed to speak up even the, against the wrong decisions of our bishops and our priests? Why? Is it because we know better than them? Is it because we are holier than them? Is it because we, we I don't know, whatever reason you may have. But no, it's not for all of those reasons. It is simply because... This is against what God has intended for us to do. God has given us the freedom to worship Him, to love Him. And it is being curtailed by people who belong to the other side of this, uh, the pendulum of grace. Okay? People who don't care about what God wants of us. And we are obliged to fight it. In the same manner that we are, you know, if we are faithful to our faith, if we are faithful to our calling as Catholics and as children of God, then we are duty-bound to defend things of God, to defend the honor of God, to defend the kingdom of God. We are duty-bound to do that if we are living up to our baptismal calling. So we cannot be silent. We cannot be silent. We cannot just stay in our comfort zone and hope that somebody else bothers with this so that I just benefit from it later on. No! Each and every one of us have to be part of the fight. Because if we are going to be silent, we are being complicit our silence means being complicit 
with the evil and the devil happening around us. And mind you, we are going to render an account for this silence. We're going to render an account. And, and I, hate, I hate to face God at the end of my own life. And when Jesus asks me, what did you do to defend my honor? What did you do to, to defend me when people were disrespecting my Eucharistic presence? What were you doing when you saw all of these priests and clergy and other faithful not living up to their vocations? When they were telling lies and abuses, what, were, what did you do? I hate to scratch my head and say, ah, uh, um, that was too hard, you know. I will lose my friends if I start talking. I, I, I'm, not, I'm, 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 what's going to happen? I'm going to lose business, you know. People are going to buy from me because they, they're going to hate me for, for my advocacy, for talking, for, I'm not going to have friends anymore. My friends will start hiding. In the... Well, what's more important to you? Is it more important to you to have friends who will be chummy chummy with you and complicit with your silence and with your infidelity? Or would you rather stand up against all of these errors and all of these infidels and stick your neck out in defense of God, in defense of your faith? It's a big question that we all have to ask ourselves. And I hope and pray we all choose to be on the side of God. I hope and pray that we all choose to answer that big, big question correctly. On the side of God. And blessed are you when you suffer all of these things. Because your reward will be great in heaven. Okay. Jake Joseph is already yawning. <laughs> okay, everybody. Have a good morning ahead of you. Have a good day ahead of you. And those of you on the other side of the globe, I could see that you're on this broadcast. Uh, have a good sleep. I hope this uh, little breakfast commentaries uh, with my family is helping some of you uh, get across your your own challenges in life and uh, gives you a little something to think about. And please spread the word. I mean, tell people about this, not for my own vanity, but if it will help others, so be it. This is all the reason why we're doing this. I'm doing this to help my own children understand the gospel message. I'm not doing this to try to gain some kind of reputation in this world. It is for my own children that I'm doing this. And if it's going to help parents out there uh, uh, to, to, to benefit from this example of how they can also teach their children, then maybe you can pass this video around. You can tell people. I have two pages on Facebook where I repost and, and, and share this. One is Catholic Praxis on Facebook. Uh, you know, facebook.com forward slash Catholic Praxis. And the other one is uh, facebook.com forward slash Gospel by Dad. You can find it there. Or just be on my own Facebook page and you'll find this. Okay. So have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye. Only Joseph said bye. I thought you were yawning and sleepy already. Bye-bye.